Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Pendulum Swan here, and we are going to take a look at Magic 2015. Now, I'm not a very good Magic player myself, but I did play quite a bit of it, and I do enjoy card games. So I'm expecting this to be good. Now, as far as I can tell, you can actually customize your own deck pretty decently in this game. However, I need to complete the tutorial first, so let's go ahead and do just that. Okay, the tutorial. Ooh, is this like four battles just to do the tutorial? Um, can I just skip it, I guess? Or maybe let's do one of them. But this said like the base, this might be really boring. Okay, so you are a planeswalker. Okay. Continue. Welcome to magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers. Yep. Powerful to win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his yep. life total down. From to do this, you will use a variety of tools. Represented in the game There's as a, a shuffle at deck. At the beginning okay. of the game, each player draws seven cards. These are cards. If you don't like your opening hand, as you can see, Matt. There we go. Okay, five colors of magic. We know quest, that. You're playing a green deck. Green specialty large, powerful is large, creatures. powerful creatures. To cast we are fighting spells or summon mage. creatures. You're gonna need some resources. Yep. So we're gonna need some lands. There we Since go. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll let's turn. Can I just like right click? Crimson I guess the game does it automatically. To okay. The I could just. To cast oh, that's spells. a stop timer. And okay. okay. So it's his turn, he's gonna play a land now, card. You will cast a spell. Okay, so land cards are pretty much your resources, Crimson and you need resources in order to Attacking with use other like useful Craze cards, Goblin. such Is as minions or spells. Power okay, he wants the us to take a look at this guy. So he has one damage and one damage HP. To destroy this creature. Every spell has a mana standard cost. stuff. To some is fire type creature. He had to use up or tap his land to yep. pay to cast this spell. Tapped card mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Yep. Summoning this. So this creature card, needs two green land cards and two other anything that requires tapping. Any type. This is called summoning sickness. These okay, summoning sickness. We know that. So he can't attack right away. He needs to wait now one turn after Archer. summoning. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. Hmm, okay. To cast this spell, play a second land, and then choose okay, the let's creature that costs. Choose that. Let's play this one. As you can see, it requires two green land cards. So we're gonna play him. He's a 3 3 creature, so that's really, really awesome. It can also have modifiers, but this one doesn't have. This creature's power and toughness are 3 3. Yep. More than a man. More than enough to deal with their glo their goblin. Now, Prince and Mage will play a land and then attack us with the crazed yep. goblin. The and combat, there he goes. He's gonna attack. And ooh, that's that's interesting. When a interesting creature UI. attacks, it taps and moves forward. Yep. I could block if I had Yep, if I had any. If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Creatures with summoning Colonial sickness Tusker can still can block, so safe. that's that's the thing we need to learn here, so I can block him, just like that. And he's gonna have to fight through him first in order to attack us. Um click on your to declare the blocker. I just just did that. Oh I need to click the block to finalize the action. There we go. So the, the, combat the combat is going to play out now. Step, each creature deals um, let's see, it. there we go. So we took one damage, he took three, he's now dead. Our guy has two HP left now. And get him back. At the end of and every turn, should be each our turn. Heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. There we go, so we recover the HP. If he's not going to be able to do anything else to play another harm life. him. Okay, so we're gonna play another land, and we can't use anything. We need now five or four Crimson Mage. for those two cards. So we're gonna attack him and attack, and two 
into combat and because he's gonna he take 3 damage. To block with. Crimson may he's gonna be down to 17 HP. Boom. Smack. Don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. Can I just pass it quicker? I guess not. Okay, he's gonna summon what is that? Blood crazed neonate. So he has some special properties here. Whenever blood crazed neonate deals combat damage to a player, put a 1 1 counter on it. So he gains buffs when he attacks me. Um deals combat damage to a player, yep, so he needs to attack my guy here actually in order for that to work, which he can actually do, but not right away hmm, okay, let's play another land and let's play another monster what do we have here? standard monster again, but he's a 4-4 he's pretty strong I'm gonna play him there and he's gonna actually be able to block his 2-1 Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Yep. I'm gonna attack Remember, with that. Can't att it's important to know that in magic you can, he can choose to block with his 2 1, and he does so, blocked. which is a waste because he's not gonna do anything, he's just gonna lose his creature for free. So he may have tried to keep his minion and maybe try and buff him or something, but. Time, we're gonna try I guess he would have died different. anyway to my 4-4 four, four creature. Land and casting a spell before combat, wait Attacks until each turn after able. combat. Okay, 3-3. Three, three. Oh, we want to try something else. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell, wait until after combat, okay? So let's do that. Let's... Now, attack with both of your creatures. Okay, so he wants us to attack with both of them. He it is gonna block like the three Mage three. Has decided not to block with his blood rock cyclops. Oh. So he'll take Okay, he's not gonna block, which is surprising. So he's gonna take a lot of damage here. The main there we go. After combat, go ahead and play your so you'll now we're gonna play shape to win if you cast some more cards next. during the second main phase. And this is a 3-7, ooh, this is a great defending card. So we are going to be able to defend against the Cyclops, and he's not going to be able to do anything to us. Crimson that is play a land always and nice. Things are looking good. Yep, he's going to play another land card. Where can I see his cards though? I guess he has 5 cards. I have 3 over here, he has 5 cards in his hand. Okay, I need to block. Block. Block that, block. There we go. What is that two though? I guess that's his graveyard, yep. He has two, now three cards in the graveyard. He has 48 cards remaining. All you need to and we got... Is attack with we got only... Only land cards, but... We're gonna just finish him off right now. There we go. Come on. Boom. Look at, look at that, In different animations two, we'll too. Spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. There you go guys, that was the first tutorial mission. Let's go ahead and... Maybe I should just skip the other ones. Let's see what we got. Second quest, Expanding Horizons. Let's just skip that one. Proven yourself worthy to wield a deck of your own. Okay. Choose carefully. So I can choose... Hmm. Which one should I choose? So we played green, red is pretty cool, black, blue, white. Mm. White or red? I think I should go red just because it's kinda kinda neat with all the fireball spells and whatnot. Ooh, choose your starting deck. Mm. Should we go with this one? Assault your opponents using a swarm of red creatures. Enhance them with auras to punch the tougher defenses. Pick red creatures using inexpensive blue spells. Smash and burn. Stampede of large red creatures. Summon quickly using green spells that provide more lands. Let's go ahead with this one. Yeah, sure. What is this? Final quest. Oh, we do need to finish this one off. Um, can we actually? Oh, we can do the campaign. 
No, I guess it just it skipped all of them. Okay. Can we go into the deck building section? To have completed the tutorial. Have I not completed it? I guess I still gotta do this one. Prove your worth. Okay, let's do this one then. Hmm. Gotta beat the giants. Let's do it then. Okay, you can keep or draw a new hand. What do we got here? We got two lands, we got a two drop, another two drop, many two drops. And what is this? Lightning talents. So I'm not actually quite happy with this, although we do have some creatures. Um, let's just draw a new hand. And we're gonna keep this one, I believe. Yeah, we got a lot of lands now. And we do have a few creatures, so let's keep that one, because if we draw again, we're gonna draw only 6 instead of 7. So we don't really want to do that too often. As long as you get a decent, decent draw, you should probably keep it. Okay, so we got some... We only got nature creatures here, so let's play the forest. And we can summon her. Um, okay, don't show again, thank you. Got an elf scout. She's a pretty basic creature, a 1-1. One, one. So let's play that one. There we go. And that should be it for our turn. And don't show that again. Should have probably turned those tips off in the options menu. Okay, he's gonna play some nature cards as well. Doesn't have a creature though. Go, we're gonna go ahead and play Mountain and we can play, let's see, this is a spell so this deals 2 damage to a creature or the player so we can either hold on to that and use it as a finisher when he is low on HP or kill a 2 HP creature of our choosing or combo it with one of our creatures and take it down that way so we got the wolf and what is this? Titanic growth target creatures gets plus four plus four until end of turn. So that's gonna be a nice thing to have, but we're gonna play the wolf for now. We can play that later on. We can also attack with the one one. So there we go. Attack, he's gonna take one damage. The wolf doesn't really have any special abilities, so that's okay. He's a pretty pretty cheap fellow. So we did one damage to him, what's he gonna play now? Oh, he's gonna play a mountain as well, so I guess we got the same deck as he has. And look at that, Kiln Fiend, a 1-2 beast. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, he gets 3 damage until end of turn. Interesting. Okay, so he's gonna play that. We're gonna be able to attack with this guy and hopefully kill it. Or we could just shock him, I guess? I'm guessing we're just gonna do that, although it may not be worth it. We do got Titanic Growth. What is this? Chandler Creature gets 3 damage and has first strike. Ooh, that's really, really nice. We could actually use that in order to deal with that guy. Let's go ahead and play a mountain first. And what do we want to do here? We can do this one, or we can just do shock. Let's do shock on his creature, on that guy. There we go, and he's dead, and now we can attack, continue, combat, and he's going to take 3 damage, there we go, very nice. Up. Okay, we could still, play, could still play Titanic Growth, but there's no reason to right now more info. What else can we learn about this card? So we can learn about what first strike does, but it's obviously what it says, it's first strike. The creature attacks first before anyone else. And look at that, they have double strike, deal combat damage twice each combat. So there are different abilities. And the enchant aura, okay. Um, let's get out of here, zoom out, there we go. So what is he doing? playing another mountain and he's gonna play a 1-1 creature just like our own there 
which would be quite useful to deal with my 2-1 so I might have to use some spells here oh and he's gonna play a kill fiend as well alright so this is getting a bit problematic and we draw only resources we need to actually draw some monster cards or some spells mana tapping yeah 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 so I could use hmm probably use this one hmm titanic growth plus four plus four until end of turn I guess we could use that that's not gonna help us all that much and first strike I guess we're gonna have to use this on our wandering wolf there we go and moving on to combat and let's attack this one um, do I want to attack with this guy? probably not yeah I'm gonna hold on to that guy and attack him and he could try and block but he's not gonna do that because I have first strike so that would be a pretty terrible to thing to a pretty terrible thing indeed to do because he'll just lose both his minions because of my first strike enchantment over there. He could use like some sort of debuff ability on my guy. I can block his one one right here. Uh, can be blocked by a creature of this type. Why not? Um, can be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. So there we go, they do have some interesting abilities there, so I can't attack that guy. So I'm not gonna block then, because I can't kill that guy. Um, how do I skip blocking then? Skip blocking, there we go. I'm gonna take 2 damage. That's not too bad. And he cannot block right now, although he did play a Primal Hunt Beast. And he is hexproof, interesting. So that means we can't use polymorph and stuff like that, I guess. Hexproof. That's actually... There we go. Something with hexproof can be chosen as a target of spells or abilities its controller's opponent's control. Don't use the word target. Still affect something with hexproof. There we go. We can't target him with spell abilities, okay? We can play the titanic growth and we should probably do that I'm gonna play it on this guy I'm gonna make him really strong there we go has a lot of HP now I'm gonna attack with him there we go and he should probably block this if he wants to survive and he's not gonna block so he's just gonna take 9 damage which is pretty terrible for him what is he gonna do now? He can deal 5 damage to me, which is not going to be a problem right now. There we go. I can't really block anything, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just skip blocking for now. He's gonna play ooh, he's gonna play a titanic growth of his own. Interesting. And there we go, he's gonna deal Whoa, he's gonna deal a lot of damage actually. Damn, he dealt like 12 damage there. Nice. Okay, so we get what is this? Advocate of the Beast, two three, and at the beginning of your end step, put one one counter on target beast creature you control. And we do control this beast here, the Wandering Wolf. So let's go ahead and play that. But he should probably be dead right now, unless he has like some spell to counter our attack here, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't. He has only two cards in his hand. And there you go. He is dead. Nice. View battlefield. What does this do? I guess we can see the ending screen, okay? If we wanna... If we wanna see what really happened, like when we lose game, we can just go ahead and... How did he kill me? and go ahead and look through his heart and be like oh he used the 5-1 with the lightning talons okay that was pretty good play kudos to him for beating us and 
let's continue. Achievement unlocked. Finish the tutorial. Okay. New beginner title and a booster. Let's open the booster, sure. What do we get here? Veto Titan. Ooh, that's a pretty interesting creature. It's a 6 mana with 7 attack, but only 2 defense. So you gotta be really careful on how you play this creature. Or you might want to consider buffing his toughness so it can withstand some damage. But with that card, we should be able to put it in our own deck. Which we should be able to do right now because we finished the tutorial. And let's go ahead and... Oh, there we go, the deck builder. So it automatically does it for us. So on this screen you can create and shape the decks you will use in duels. It contains the cards you currently have in your collection. So right now, obviously I have only that one card, but... You play more and more, and you unlock more cards, of course. Then you can really design unbeatable decks, and really overpowered ones. This is the, these are the current cards that I have in my deck. Here we go, a strong deck has a good balance of lands and spells. Currently this deck has 26 lands and 34 spells, which is ideal. Mm, I wonder. I actually don't know. I would honestly get less land cards than that. The first card, rare card, which means it is very special. You can add this card to your deck to use it in duels. Adding cards you earn to your deck can improve it. Click and drag on the card to move it to your deck. So this one I guess. There we go, we've added the Fight of Titan. Well then, to keep the balance of lands and spells in your deck, you should take out one spell. So we're gonna remove Trinkus Command, what does that do? 1-1 one, one Red Goblin Creature Tokens onto the battlefield. So that's all that, all that great. And we already had two of them, so now we're gonna take one out. Save changes, click done, wait a minute. To do this, click done. You will then be asked if you want to save and quit. Oh, I see do this now to continue your journey. So there's no actual save button over here. We need to click done and we're gonna do save and quit. Okay. Nice work. As you unlock more cards, don't forget to come back to the deck builder to improve and change your decks. Nice. What is this? The Anaki created the Chain Veil. Not merely to destroy, but to create destroyers. <laughs> Of course, most are too weak to survive its curse. But there are always more who are lured by its promise of power. Some have been twisted and ruined by its dark magic. But Garrick? If his curse is not removed, he will be a threat to us all. That kind of looked like the prince with the mask in Warrior Within. <laughs> Okay, so I'm guessing this is the campaign over here. Um, I can't really select anything else. So there are four campaigns. Or there are more. Yep, there's one more in there. So there are at least five campaigns. We've got the first one here, Innistrad. Innistrad. The vampire Sorin Markov has invited you to his home plane of Innistrad to investigate the murders of several planeswalkers. Garrick be behind us. So let's go ahead and play one match of the campaign here. Living Death. So we gotta deal Explore Innistrad. Ooh, let's do that. I can't do. I guess I gotta beat all these guys first. Looks like there are only four of them. Okay, so let's do this one, Living Death. So we are going to play against the undead cards. Horrible sight. Mangled body of a planeswalker. Let's do this. She'll be more than happy to recruit us to her cause, okay? We got three land cards and a lot of creature cards, which are not that costly, so I'm gonna 
actually keep this hand, I'm quite happy with it. And actually that's not all that great, but these cards do not require more than one mountain card, except for this one, the Marauding Malhorn. Malhorn, Malhorn, there we go, I can pronounce. What's this? Foundry Street Denizen. Whenever another red creature enters the battlefield under your control, Foundry Street Denizen gets plus one. Ooh, so that's actually really useful. And that's a one, two. So we want to play this one first. There we go. So we can gain a buff once we play this one next turn. We cast an instant or sorcery spell. Instant or sorcery spell, interesting. I don't think we got any of those in our hands. Okay, what's she gonna do? She's gonna play, there we go. A swamp card, I guess, is that? Can I not zoom on it? I guess I can't zoom on it. Okay, I'm gonna play another forest card, and we're probably gonna play the Kiln Fiend. What else can we play? We can play this guy here, Krenka's Command. Put two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. Ooh, actually that's really useful. And does it... will it double proc this thing? Let's see. Let's see what will happen. Two. There we go. It's double procced our guy. Because that card summoned two creatures. So that's a pretty... pretty good opening combo there. Gonna deal three damage right off the bat. Now it's her turn. It's gonna play. She's gonna play another land card. And yep, those are indeed swamp lands. And he's gonna play Walking Corpse, a 2-2. With no special abilities. Okay. We'll take that. There we go. And it is our turn. We're gonna play another forest. And we can play. We got two of these now. Regathon Firecat. These look really nice. Hmm. Or I could play the Kiln Fiend. I guess I'm gonna have to play the Fire Cat. Yep, let's play the Fire Cat. And right now I can't. I guess I can act. I can actually attack with this guy. Uh, but I don't think that's a really good play. So let's just. Probably just skip attack here, because we don't wanna, we don't wanna trade that for that. Actually, we can let him attack with his walking corpse, and we can trade these two, these two goblins, for him. It should be better than trading our Pondry Street Denizen, I believe at least. So let's go ahead and block with these two. There we go. Combat damage. Yep. Block. deal one damage and one more damage and he's down there we go so we successfully traded those for that guy now he's gonna play a warpath ghoul which is a 3-2 okay we might have to trade a 4-1 for that hmm. or actually no we're gonna attack with this guy and hopefully he will want to trade with us now what can we play here we got three mana I can play another fire cat or another one of these guys. This is quite useful actually. But I think I'm just gonna play another fire cat, screw it. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and should I attack with both of them? Probably yes. Yeah, why the hell not? Sure, I'll take that trade. I'll take that trade. And keep my 1-1 one, one Foundry Street Denizen. There we go, he's gonna trade for that guy. Fine with me. Still have another Fire Cat here. He does have six cards in his hand, which is pretty, pretty bad for us here. He's gonna play a Ghoul Razor. When Ghoul Razor enters the battlefield, return a zombie card that random from a graveyard to your hand. So that's actually really useful for her. She's going to do that, okay. She's going to get... What was that? Didn't quite get to see it. Ooh, we do have Titanic Growth right now. We got... 
kill fiend. I'm gonna play Spire Tracer, I believe. There we go. Now we could also play the Kiln Fiend or the Titanic Growth. Um, let's play the Kiln Fiend. There we go. And maybe. No, I just wanna attack, I guess, with this guy. I'm not gonna trade my 4 1 anymore. So let's do this. Is he gonna trade? Probably. He is not actually, which is quite interesting. That means he wants to attack us. Okay, playing more swamp cards. She has a lot of resources. She could play really big creatures right now. Um, I could block, but it's not really worth it, so we're gonna skip blocking. We're gonna take the 2 damage. There we go. Don't really have any good defending creatures here. Ooh, he's gonna play Polluted Dead. Dies, destroy target land. Ooh, he can destroy our lands. If we kill that guy, this is gonna be quite nasty. Oh, I did get another land card, though, which I'm going to save actually because I don't want him to destroy it. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, force him to use the 3 3 to block us. Hmm, could use this though. Marauding Molehorn. Attacks each combat fable unless you control a creature named Advocate of the Beast. Each combat. I don't really understand that. Um, does this mean if I block I can still attack? I guess, I guess that's what it means. If I block one turn I can still attack afterwards. I think that's what it means. So actually let's go ahead and play Titanic Growth on this guy over here. There we go. And we are going to attack with everyone because that will force him to block. Otherwise he dies. There we go. And attack. What's he gonna do? He will have to block this guy, perhaps, or the 4-2. He's gonna black he's gonna block that one, okay? Still gonna take a lot of damage. Oh, there we go. And he's gonna destroy our mountain. And we're gonna play another mountain. And that's the end of this turn. So she's down to 7 HP. She has 6 land cards. So that's... Not all that useful for her. She sees. Ooh, but there, there she goes. She plays a five drop. Zombie warrior. Okay. Let's see how well will that do for her. Ooh, another force card. But unfortunately, we can't play that guy because we do not have two mountains. And what could I do here? Hmm. Could try and attack with everyone. He's gonna block. This is kind of terrible. I'm not sure if I should attack here or not. Mm, yeah, sure. Let's just attack with all. See what happens. So he's gonna go ahead and block what exactly? Okay, that guy and that guy. So he actually blocked really well here. He's gonna lose only one dude. So that was a pretty terrible play by me. But I don't really wanna think this through right now, I just wanna show you guys how how this game works pretty much. We got a walking corpse, two two drop, there we go. So he's actually getting an advantage over us right now. We got another street denizen, which is not gonna help us all that much. But I guess I can still attack with her. If I attack with him... Yeah, I can attack with him, sure. That's really good. He can't block this one because it is a flying creature. Or it kind of is, because it says can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. 
Although it doesn't show me that it is as flying. I'm guessing it's just one of our special abilities, so we ended up trading there. Now he's gonna attack with that 5 creature, which is gonna hurt pretty bad. Although I could block. But no, I'm gonna take the 5 damage because we might be able to kill him next turn. Okay, we took a lot of damage there. He's gonna play, what is that? Rotting Fence Snake. A 5 1 creature, okay. That's not too bad for us. And we got, what is that? Advocate of the Beast. Okay, let's go ahead and play that one. Though that's not very helpful right now. Let's go ahead and attack him. What's gonna happen here? Is she gonna block with a 5 1? She's not gonna block. Okay, so this is interesting here because it can go either way. She has one card left. She's going to. She's gonna decide to try and block. And look at that, man. An instant spell deals X damage to target creature or player. If only we had two mountains, we could deal three damage to her and finish the game. Now, I can still attack with her. Um, if I attack with him, he's gonna get blocked by that guy. However, if I attack with both of them, he's gonna have to block it with this one, so we're gonna trade. And that will let me survive to the next turn, so we're gonna do this. The next turn we can just finish her off with the Spire Tracer. Unless she's gonna use a spell or something to block that one. Okay, so there we go. He goes ahead and he blocks. There we go. Do kill his rotten pen snake, which is really nice. His zombie survives with 1 HP, which is kind of unfortunate, but still good. And <laughs> unfortunately for her, she drew another land card. So there you go, she has 10 land cards, but no actual card to use. So you really don't want to have that many land cards in your deck. Man, these draws, I keep drawing these big creatures. But this should end the game. This was a pretty close one. As you can see, games can be pretty intense. The game can be quite challenging. Oh, and also I'm playing on medium difficulty. So if I would have played on hard, I would have most likely got my ass kicked by her. But there you go, guys. And also we got a new booster, what do we get this time? And we can go to deck manager and put them in. So we got the prey upon, target creature you control fights, target creature you don't control. That's a one mana cost. 4 mana cost, a 3-3 wolf. And the standing troops with vigilance, which I don't remember what it does. But it's a 1-4, there we go. And we can continue. And it's gonna take us to the next the next guy that we need to fight. But I guys but I hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you now know a little bit about this game I guess it doesn't really add that much over the older magic games so there we go we got three more dudes to, to fight here and then we got these other these other campaigns over here and you can also do some practice or take it to multiplayer if you so desire but anyways guys that's it for me with this video one more look at the deck builder here we got all statistics shown here we got 10 2 drops for example 7 3 drops all that good stuff we got mountain and nature cards that's always nice I don't see a search button though so that might suck 
I'm gonna have like way too many unlocked cards. It's gonna be quite a while to find what I'm searching for. But yeah guys, that's Magic 2015 for you. I I don't know if I'm gonna play more of this game. It's, it's quite fun. You might do it. But until then, make sure to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.